Tottenham is the model railway I built probably 12, 15 years ago. Uh, it was a DC layout, analogue, uh, complete loop of the garage, tail chaser. Had some really nice scenic bits across the garage doors. Uh, a station with five platforms, and uh, of two of which were bays, some goods interest, a goods depot, coal yard, turntable up at the top of the station, plenty of activity, but the only problem with it was it never really got a lot of use. This was because every time I wanted to run the layout, it involved moving both cars out of the garage and fitting two big sections across the garage doors. Not an easy task as one of them was nearly eight foot long and was getting quite heavy and had, had a fold down leg, trestle leg. So after some planning I decided to rearrange the garage a bit. I decided to turn one side into a railway room, line it with uh, some insulation, make it a proper room with which wasn't uncomfortable to work in. And both cars would still fit in the other side of the garage, which wasn't a problem. All the bicycles and things can go over there, which gave me a working space probably about 2.2 metres wide by getting on for 7.5 metres long. So I decided to use my CAD skills, seeing so I spend quite a lot of time each day uh, drawing on a package called Rhino. I'd say it's a brilliant package, um, very good for 3D. I design the whole layout, or the new part of the layout, should I say, the extension to the old layout entirely in this CAD package before I cut a single piece of wood up and then I would extract all the components and utilise as many of the uh, workshop machines as I could to build this. So I'm going to give you a quick run through hopefully of all stages in diagrammatic form of what I broke the layout down into how I produced the components, and some of them, some of them I've actually filmed them being machined out. Not all of them, unfortunately, because I'm at the uh, workshop with a smaller laser facility at the moment. So the stuff that I produced um, on the big CNC machine, I didn't get a chance to film that because I hadn't decided to re re record all this process at that point. So as much as I've got on film, I'll try and show you.
with all the bits cut the next job was to jack up the existing baseboard trolley jack out, a few blocks of wood underneath and then knock up a whole load of new longer legs which were done with a bit of uh, timber, two holes in the bottom a couple of uh, nut runners and then some uh, coach bolts and some lock nuts Hey presto, you've got adjustable legs and all you have to do is wind the coach bolt in and out and then lock it with the lock nut. The first baseboard which I made was for the large stacking spiral. This was about 5 foot by 7 foot and would have the two loops and the big spiral that took you all the way down to the base, to the fiddle yard. It was made out of the laser cut um, MDF curves with a flat between them. Each one carried a, a, a radius 3 and a radius 4 track with a 600mm separation to make it a long spiral in order to get the gradient down to below 1 in 50. Uh, it was four stacks high by the time it was finished and that meant that you could go down the 300 with a relatively easy gradient. Having built the first spiral I then progressed along the garage building each uh, fiddle yard base one after the other and because when this was finally going to be finished it would be covered by uh, an upper scenic level it meant laying the track as I kind of went as you can see I followed behind with the side board which supported the scenic area above and then the ribs one by one got fixed to that to progressively build the kind of backbone of the scenic area above um, they're not just cantilevered off I later went back and in the dead zone between where the tracks were I put a piece of studding as a leg to hold these up and give it a little bit of more supportive stre uh, strength. The fiddle yard splits into two sections, the upline fiddle yard and the downline fiddle yard. There's approximately 15 sidings on the upline fiddle yard and 17 on the downline. The downline ones are fractionally smaller but then there's a small capacity to expand at either end and these will be available for both lines to use, both the up and the down. With the majority of the track work done at this point, apart from the branch line which will be put in at a later date, I went back and wired up the main power buses. There will be a power bus for the upline, a power bus for the downline, and there will be a power bus which covers the station area. Each one will be powered by its own 5 amp uh, power supply. Having run some trains and tested everything, found out that it was pretty much working. I then decided to go back, fill in between the uh, ribs that form the new scenic area, a bit of polystyrene trimmed roughly to the right shape with a hot wire and then a layer of plaster and sand over the top to seal it and come back to it at a later date and start working into those areas. But for the time being that will uh, do and we'll see how we get on. In Thank you.